Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience of working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. That hasn't really impressed me. I was just expecting more of a, a, a wow factor, I suppose. But from outrageous owners... Who's responsible for that? Sally. Bull So whose fault is it? Mine. To dodgy decor... I really don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. <laughs> or her quest for perfection. I honestly feel as if I'm being persecuted by pubes. This week, the hotel inspector faces the mother of all battles. This whole building is rather like a time capsule for other people's junk. You're running it like a personal fiefdom. Personal fiefdom. <laughs> My brother wants to modernise. I can see there'll be battles in the future. I can be stubborn and I can be bullshy and I can be big-headed. And she will grow to love the hornet's nest and the dismembered dolls eventually. The Walpole Bay Hotel and Museum, a beacon of a bygone era on the Kent coast. Step inside and you step back in time to when it was first built in 1914. Once you walk through our doors, you're in another world. Walpole Bay Hotel, good evening, how may we help? A world where old, good old-fashioned standards and people cared about each other and people talked to each other. And that's what we do here. General Manager Jane Bishop is obsessed with living in the past. Walpole is not just a hotel, it's a museum too. Every nook, cranny and corridor of the hotel's five floors is crammed with her keepsakes. It's a really, really unusual, wonderful old building full of the most amazing artefacts that you wouldn't see anywhere else. But after 14 years at the helm, running this old Margate relic in the 21st century has become a struggle for matriarch Jane and her team of son Justin and daughter Dominie. Hi there. If you're going in the dining room, you've got to take your own chair. We've run out. Mum certainly is front of house. This is her stage, her theatre. We do have different views on how the hotels run. We don't agree on a lot of things. People come from all over the world to visit our museum and Justin calls it mother's junk in front of the guests. He has no soul. My brother wants to modernise and um, my mum wants to keep it all traditional and I can see there, there'll be uh, battles in the future. Just, can you put them in the little room? Thank you. This is a family at war. We need space for the choir here. We need standing room and the organ. The choir normally comes in the door and has that area there. Yes, darling, but the easiest thing is to move this table and give us lots of floor space. OK. We've got to have somewhere to sit then. OK. Calm down. <gasps> the family relationships were becoming more and more frayed. I basically don't feel that we'll have a family at the end of it. Um, I personally don't feel that we have a great family life now. It's not just the family that's falling apart. A 20% occupancy rate for the 41 rooms means the business is also at breaking point. We're in a bit of a rut and we don't know how to get out of it business-wise. We may not even be here in 12 months' time. It's make or break, really. Enter award-winning hotelier Alex Polizzi. Her mission, to work out if the Walpole Bay Hotel, with its rich and colourful past, will also have a future. What the hotel inspector doesn't know is that she's walking into the crossfire of Jane and son Justin's bickering. Jane. Alex Polizzi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Walpole, Alex. Thank you so much for inviting me to come. Oh, it's lovely to have you here. The family's feuding even extends to the decor. Justin wants to modernise, like his design for room 305. 
while Jane believes the room should remain, like room 103, firmly planted in the hotel's Edwardian past. Now I'd like to go up to my room. Um, 103. Lovely. Is a lovely little old four-poster with a balcony on the front. Fantastic. But just or 305, <laughs> which is a wonderful new four-poster bed on the top floor with the best view. OK, thank you very much. I'll go and look at them both, if that's all right with you, and then I'll make my decision of where to stay. Will you all decide on 103, Alex? 305. <laughs> 103. 305. 103. Be 305, Alex. As part of her investigation into the Walpole's woes, Alex will stay the night. She must choose which room to sleep in. What a nice lift. I think she's going to fall in love with Walpole because people do. And I think as Alex goes round the room, she will see that every single room is different, but it has its own little character. Apart from the modern one, of course. <laughs> Three hundred five is, in my opinion, the perfect hotel room. It's got everything in there to a grand scale. This is my least favourite stuff in the entire world. I never understand. What do people think it adds to a room to put little chunks of wood somewhere? Why is there a wine rack in here? Why is there a little table under the window? OK, for a start, the only reason the wine rack is here is because it's pine and everything else is pine, so it all matches. This is actually quite nice. And you know what? It's immaculately clean, too. Whoever chose the art should be put up against a wall and shot. I see what Justin's trying to do. He's trying to make a modern, clean-looking room, but it's just done with such awful taste. What on earth is this bedroom doing at the Walpole? Justin's inferior design has not gone down well with the hotel inspector. Next, it's Jane's traditional room 103. Well, straight away, the bathroom is a lot less impressive. I hate carpet on a bathroom floor. First of all, men are not known for their aim. It just soaks in all the moisture from all the millions of showers that have happened, and so it's quite often a bit mouldy and rotting underneath the carpet. Look at this plant in this awful collection of pots. I don't like this little arrangement, and although I like the sofa, I still don't understand why there's not a table in front of it. OK, so I get it. The whole idea is that this is an Edwardian bedroom which is definitely more in keeping with the Walpole Bay Hotel. And I think probably this is the way to go. Although, this family clearly needs some help in designing their rooms, because although I didn't like the bedroom upstairs, I can't say I'm overly fond of this one either. But choosing a room is the least of the hotel inspector's problems. I have a couple of issues with the Living Museum. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a cull. <sighs> She's gone. You will grow to love it, Alex. I doubt it, James. The Walpole Bay in Margate was once at the epicentre of the town's tourist trade. But this grand old dame has fallen on hard times. On the face of it, to the outside world, Walpole is a successful business. We're vibrant, we're full of people, we're always busy. But in reality, we're not. With dwindling visitor numbers, Jane Bishop and her children, Justin and Domini, are at loggerheads over the hotel's future. Mum is a step back in time and really feels that uh, that's the character of the hotel and what it's got to offer. I feel, personally, we need to modernise. But um, pretty much what she says goes. Unfortunately. Yes. If you put them in the little room. Thank you. Expert hotelier Alex Polizzi has arrived to help turn the family's fortunes around and show them the way forward. Last night, the hotel inspector was offered two rooms to sleep in. She had to choose between mother and son's conflicting visions for the Walpole Bay. 
Although I didn't like the bedroom upstairs, I can't say I'm overly fond of this one either. It's morning and Jane is up early, preparing breakfast. I don't know which room Alex stayed in last night, but I do hope it's 103. It's very cosy and comfy and it's got an antique four-poster bed and, and hopefully she'll get a good impression from that, but I think she may have chosen 305. Oh, I'm terrified. <laughs> On her way to breakfast, Alex can't help but notice the hotel's cramped corridors stuffed with all the exhibits that make up Jane's museum. I mean, what the hell is this? Lovely milk bottles, but what it's got to do with Edwardiana, I've got no idea. And why have five typewriters? Over the years, Jane has collected or had donated thousands of objects, including 22 sewing machines, 19 typewriters, 21 carpet cleaners, 40 milk bottles, 450 seashells, 32 suitcases, and even one action man. I just can't quite believe that people come here and give Jane the limbs to their dolls. This is like a doll graveyard. Very spooky. Hornet's nest from France. I mean, why is that here? And don't tell me that that washed up on the Margate coastline. What there is here is a mass of stuff, and some of it is junk and some of it's good, and no one's willing to decide what should be chucked and what should stay. The overall effect is much less that of a museum than of a junk shop. The museum is free of charge, but Jane's obsession with it is costing her dearly. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Alex. How did you sleep? Very well, thank you for the hot water bottle. <laughs> That's OK. And which room did you sleep in? In your room. In 103? Oh, yes. I'm so pleased. Well, I wanted to sleep somewhere that was representative of the whole hotel. Right. Here we are, Alex. Thank you. Milk, cream and butter curls. Ooh. Butter curls, I Butter am curls. being spoiled. <laughs> you are, there we are. So how much do you allow per customer for breakfast? Oh, my goodness. You don't know, do you? I haven't got a clue. Because the costing part of it isn't important to me. Right. The satisfaction of the guests, the quality of the food and everything is important. But I don't mind you not being able to tell me that. Mm. As long as you are aware that that is a question that needs to be asked yes. and answered, whether mm -hmm. it's by you or one of the kids. Well, that side of it is me. So the kids couldn't answer because that's left to me. After 14 years in charge, Jane doesn't know how much a breakfast costs the hotel or even if they're making any profit. It's lovely to be at a hotel where you can see that the family really care about customer service, but I'm shocked and astonished about how little grip they've got on the financial side of this business. And you can't tell me that that isn't having an effect on how successful they are. I haven't got a blooming clue how much it's going to cost us to serve a breakfast. Something we talk about doing, but we've never got around to doing it. And my problem is, I just can't answer her, and that's what makes me feel silly. Alex tracks down 34-year-old administrator Domini to Hi, find Dom. out more about how the hotel is run. I asked your mum this morning how much it cost to put breakfast on a plate, and she had no idea. Someone needs to know the answer. Someone needs to have all those facts at their fingertips, and I'm assuming that that person is going to have to become you. I do do a lot of paperwork here, but I don't have a lot of responsibility for the paperwork here. So there's not really much responsibility given away from my mum. I mean, is it a, so a source of conflict in the family? That's a key problem for us. We don't know how to communicate in the business without upsetting the family balance. Next on Alex's list is son and functions manager, Justin. We're starting here, this is our five-course Sunday lunch menu that we offer our guests. For £15.95? Yes. Which seems like an extremely good price to me. And our lunch trade is, is booming. Sunday lunch normally runs at about 80 covers. We use it as a loss leader. And the idea there is if change is implemented, 
to the content or the price, maybe we would lose some of that custom. You said that Sunday lunch was a loss leader. Those were your words. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And if that's your busiest meal time, mm -hmm. then you're losing more than you're gaining. Something obvious to do would be to make a cheese board and one of the options of dessert. This is where we need to implement change and where we're stuck in our ways. When I, when I actually offered or said, made that suggestion, it was like, but we already have our routine in order to do that, in order to do OK, but I've got a question, big question for sure. you then. If there's been that kind of debate about something as simple as Sunday lunch, mm -hmm. are you guys for real, are you, are you actually prepared to change anything that you do to try and improve what's happening here and your profitability. I'd really love mm -hmm. you to cost out that menu for when mm -hmm. I'm next here. Yeah, sure. So that we see, you know, what kind of percentage profit you're making. The hotel inspector sits the family down with her findings so far. First on the agenda is Jane's junk. I have a couple of issues with the Living Museum. Mm-hmm. You have very little discernment about what is important and valuable stuff and what is a load of tat. You have a cabinet with amputated dolls' limbs in it. Oh, they're not amputated. The dolls were never made. Well, I the know. The notice says this. In the 50s... Jane, things aren't just valuable because they're old. I'm going to take issue with you now, Alex. No, I'm sure you're going to take lots of issue with me, but you have to let me finish. Yes, go on then. Please, because mm -hmm. I think there is this morass of stuff, mm -hmm. this tide of stuff that has submerged everything that is valuable and interesting and that is actually genuinely has a point to being here. Why on earth do you have a hornet's nest from France? <laughs> what on earth does it have to do with anything? This is not Edwardiana. This the is museum just... museum isn't Edwardiana. The whole purpose of the museum is reminiscence. And it's not that they're, they've but got a financial value. But your clientele is dying out, Jane, because no, how no, many no, people no. are going to go on reminiscing? All in all, there needs to be a cull. We obviously differ in the intrinsic value of what's here. Yeah. And that is my bag. If this building is to survive, it will survive as a hotel, not as a museum. Next, Alex wants to discuss the hotel's bedrooms. At this point, I ought to say, I'm no bigger a fan of Justin's room than I am of one of the old rooms, because I think that your room looks like it's come out of a catalogue. Right. And the Walpole isn't that, is it? No, it's not. Now, I think you need help on the design, mm -hmm. because I also think that some of the older bedrooms have quite a lot of design flaws in them. The best thing would be a combination of the two, so some mod cons, along with a healthy dose of the essence of the past, but not the reality. And finally, on to how the business is run. I think, personally, that you're slightly unfair to your children because you give them title and not enough responsibility. And I think that that is something that has to change if you want them to keep on taking care of the Walpole once you no longer will. If you want it to survive another generation, yeah. you really have to change the tenor of your ways because you're running it like a personal fiefdom. Personal fiefdom, I should... <laughs> Gone. I like Alex's idea of us being taking on more responsibility, myself and Dominique. But I don't think Alex realises how hard it's going to be to implement change here. Alex has left the family with a clear plan of action. Before solving the poor room occupancy, Jane must strip the museum back. The room's decor needs attention. Alex will design two, incorporating both Justin and Jane's vision. And last but not least, Jane must loosen the reins. Her kids must be given some responsibility for their departments. Not happy about her comments, especially that I'm running my own personal fiefdom. And we're going to have a real battle on our hands with Alex and the museum. Nothing in this building I consider to it. Why well, hate the hornet's nest? Half the people in Britain have never seen a hornet's nest. Yes, that memory. is a very personal memory. To it show willing, Jane is reluctantly tackling her pride and joy, watched by Dominic. People love trying the hats on. 
which is why they're there. They don't. We're, we're a hotel. They do. And look, the yes. hats up there. You've got modern hat, modern hat, modern hat. But they're have of one. interest. Have one to show the era, not twelve. So, what? in these cupboards do you think that you'll be able to sacrifice? Nothing. Nothing is going. What about the hornet's nest? No. People haven't seen a real live hornet's nest. What's no. next, darling? Why? Why? OK. Right. Plug. Socket. Oh, my God, it's even broken! But it's Walpole! Oh. We need hotel memorabilia or Walpole, Walpole stuff. The silverware that's got our engravings on, the plates that have got our logos and emblem on, you know, that's what we should be displaying here. I think Mum's attitude really is going to have to change a little bit uh, for us to progress. After hours of toing and froing, Jane grudgingly agrees to get rid of some of her exhibits. Pink plastic keyring. But three shells and a keyring are unlikely to impress the hotel inspector. A few days later, and Alex is back to check on progress. I've returned to the Kent coast to see if the magpie of Margate has begun her mammoth task of scaling down the living museum. There's a sign-up on the door saying that no more treasured possessions can be accepted at this time, which is looking promising, but I wonder how well I'll be received. Jane! Hello, Alex. How are you? Welcome back to my fiefdom. Thank you so much for allowing me here, Your <laughs> Highness. <laughs> so, Jane, have you actually got rid of anything so far? Mm. Shall we have a look, Jane? Mm. Yeah, we can have a look, Alex. You see, I love this. This is all to do with the wall pole. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's wonderful and it's absolutely right that it should be here. Oh, my God. You still have the dolls. The dismembered dolls, Alex, yes. Oh, I know. Yeah. We, and the hornet's nest has pride of place. We, <laughs> I just don't think that you've really embraced the spirit of weeding out in quite the manner that I was hoping you were going to, Jane. Well, I don't actually agree with your weeding out. My problem is that I've got to get you into the spirit of the Walpole Museum. My so... problem is I've got to get you into the spirit of the Walpole as an extremely successful functioning hotel mm -hmm. because I completely disagree with you about the value of lots of the stuff that you have here. But your idea of value and mine are different. You don't understand the principle from which I'm coming from. No. That's because I'm not a business woman. OK. You will grow to love it, Alex. I doubt it, Jane. <laughs> If people give things to you, you are not going to then give them away because you want more space or they're untidy or they're not considered worthy by other people. You know, I just will not, cannot accept that. I think Jane's completely deluded if she thinks that she's providing this wonderful ambiance for people, other people's treasured possessions to live on. In fact, this whole building is rather like a time capsule for other people's junk. At an impasse, the hotel inspector calls in a secret weapon. Sam Bowen is museum development officer for the county. Alex hopes that an authority in this field may finally persuade Jane to see sense. But the nightmare at the museum continues. I really do think you are going to have to declutter and end of. I briefed all the staff and you've gone behind my back. I've got to leave. Bye, Dom. After 95 years of proudly standing in Margate, the Walpole Bay Hotel is on its knees. We've either got to do something now and improve the situation or I just feel it's just going to go on and on until it burns everybody out and we don't have any money left at the end of it. Low occupancy and a feuding family are putting a massive strain on the business. The easiest thing is to move this table and give us lots of floor space. OK. We've got to have somewhere to sit then. OK. Calm down. The hotel inspector has been fighting with Mother Jane over the monster that is her museum. 
Alex has secretly invited museum expert Sam Bowen. And after covertly examining the collection, it's time to unveil who Sam is. Right, so I've got someone to introduce you to, who I hope is going to be very helpful. Yeah. Come this way. Jane, this is Sam. Welcome to the Walpole fiefdom. <laughs> Congratulations, because you've made me speechless in some respects. <laughs> this isn't unusual. The situation you found yourself in isn't unusual. But I really do think you are going to have to declutter and end mm. off and, 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 and pick some... I'm sorry, I will be firm about that. Yeah. And for a visitor um, to understand what you've got here and actually to do justice to the objects themselves, because mm. they're just not speaking to me. You can't... You don't know the stories behind them. Um, you really need to declutter. I mean... No, oh, seriously, I couldn't. If somebody's given us something, donated it, whatever our impression of it is, they've made the effort to do that and they've given it to us to take care of it for them. Whether how they're how older. are you taking care of the Well, I'm not here, taking then. care at the moment. You want to formalise me? No, I don't want to formalise you. I want you to do what you do better to make it more of an asset to the hotel. Mm -hmm. So that the hotel side, which we, we also need to make change to, and the museum side, both come up together so that it's more appealing as a whole. Mm -hmm. The fact that you still argue the principle about mm -hmm. never wanting to get rid of anything is the mm -hmm. fact that nothing has actually gone through. Jane's attitude to the museum is symptomatic of her unwillingness to change anything. I can be stubborn, and I can be bolshy, and I can be big-headed. And she will grow to love the hornet's nest and the dismembered dolls and the hats eventually. The key to safeguarding the future of the hotel lies with the younger generation. Alex believes the children are ready to have more responsibility. I get the impression Alex believes in me, and I don't want to let her down. Justin shows Alex his progress on the costings breakdown for their busy Sunday lunch. Breaking down the cost served for the customer uh, yeah. is around the £4.35 mark. The wages on, on that being £6.67. So, that £6.67 plus your £4.30 food mm -hmm. adds up to about £10.97. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it means you're making about £300 yep. on a busy Sunday lunch. Yep. I'm much happier now that you've said to me that actually you're making a margin of profit on it. Because on this basis, you can start to make rational decisions about which way you take the business. Yes, it's empowered me having the knowledge that I can tell what it's costing. And to a certain extent, it gives me the knowledge to do my job better. Next, the hotel inspector sees Domini to discover if she's getting a handle on the hotel's accounts. I think I'm in my infancy with the figures. Yeah. I think I could do an awful lot more, and I honestly think that I need to look into a more business-like approach. Next morning, Alex holds a meeting to get the whole family's focus back on the hotel. The main reason I'm here is to help increase your room occupancy because that's what's really dragging the hotel down. And there's various ways to do that, such as making sure that your web presence is good, such as making sure that everyone who has ever stayed with you before gets reminded that you're here and tempted to come back again. This is your remit. And, and I do think that that's what we've got to think about. First of all, we've got to think about getting them through the door. And then we've got to make sure that you actually make some money off them once they're here. Next, the decoration of the rooms. If you're happy, I would like to do two bedrooms and bathrooms for you. I am going to make sure that we keep very much the feeling of this as an old-fashioned hotel. OK? Just to warn you. Alex's design will be unveiled to Jane and Justin once completed. Now to tackle those battling bishops. I like you very much for presenting a united front, but I do think that there are these things bubbling under the surface which actually you don't confront very healthily. Now, that's something we're going to have to get over because... Well, it goes deeper than that, doesn't it? Because we have a major... <laughs> more we, we, More sinister, oh, yes. <laughs> but we have this major problem where we can't... Justin and I 
he doesn't know whether I'm his mother or his boss. And we hide that from you, you see. So I think, you know, it's quite, you need to take a deep breath and take a step back and anything that needs saying, you have to say in a professional manner, you have to receive in a professional manner. That's going to be difficult <laughs> yeah, for this, <laughs> this I can't relationship. Think of anything more difficult. In, in <laughs> well, now we have to make sure that the family works as well as the hotel working. It doesn't look to me like you get an enormous amount of time to enjoy yourselves as a family outside this place. We oh, don't. So I'm casting down the gauntlet. I would like you to find a day when you go out and do something nice together. Not a day a week. No. Right. <laughs> One day we might be able to manage their weeks beyond us. <laughs> and finally, Alex would like an event to celebrate her new design. In order to show off the new rooms, I would like us to have some kind of party here. Good stuff came out of that discussion. And it's good that we can open up in front of Alex, who, who is a virtual stranger, really. She's not one of the family, and she's not a client, and she's not a business colleague. She's somebody else. Oh, the forthcoming launch party is really exciting for us. It's a, a marvellous way of letting people know that we are still here and that we are progressing and, you know, come and enjoy Walpole. A week later, it seems old habits die hard. Why are we accepting museum donations still? I have never seen this before in my life. A man said, yes. In yes. And said that you told him to bring it in this week. OK, I took the notice down. And we haven't got any other Toby Chugs, so he's a first. It's just really disrespectful of me. No, it isn't, darling. Yes, it is. I briefed all the staff, I did all the notices, and then you've gone behind my back. I have no resolution to it. I'm talking to a brick wall. I've got to leave. Bye, Dom. Bye. But it's taken Domini's disappointment to make Jane rethink her whole stance on the museum. I've got to take criticism from my children, and that's difficult, because they love me, they love what I do. They don't necessarily love the museum. I think Alex truly, truly feels that the museum could be a solid part of the hotel that enhances the hotel. As she said, the rooms are important to us because that's where we earn our living. And it's back to the thing that the museum's our hobby and I'm still treating it like a hobby. We do need to refocus on what we need to do to make the business profitable and viable as well. OK, I'll agree with you there. Now I've had time to calm down, it's going to be a wonderful experience working with Sam. She has so much expertise and there's so much that I need to know about displaying. Jane has transformed the ballroom into the mother of all junk shops. The extent of her obsessive collecting is laid bare for the world to see. We're running out of space, guys and girls. Museum expert Sam is back to help her sort the crud from the cream and put together a collection any proper museum would be proud of. Milk bottles? They don't say anything about hotels or holidaying or the seaside or Margate. I'd strike them off. We'll make the most of this. It's the one and only time you're going to see me throw anything wall in the skip. Here we go. It's a massive breakthrough. But does this change of heart herald a new dawn for the hotel? Chips. It's four months since the hotel inspector first called. This morning, something strange is afoot. Jane, Justin and Dominie are nowhere to be seen. Can we stop for a 99 before no. dinner? Yeah. <laughs> They're following Alex's advice to put work aside for the first time in a year. And what better than a round of mini golf? It feels fantastic to be away from the hotel. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a stress reliever. As long as I win, of course. Alex wants me to take a step back to allow Justin and Dominie their head. And that's what we've got Great. to try and achieve.
I don't feel that we're stepping on each other's toes as, as much as we were previously. <laughs> um, this shows that we can function as a normal family, which <laughs> maybe is lost once upon a time. Oh, my God. With clear heads, the family attempt to decide how the hotel is to be run. Well, I, I, I want the responsibility, but there is a transition period for it to happen. Well, I'm quite happy to step back from the room, Stanley. I don't see... At last, do Jane is allowing 38-year-old Justin to be in charge of something, the bedrooms. And in a hotel, nothing is more important. The Walpole Bay Hotel is a hive of activity. Behind closed doors, work on Alex's design for the two rooms is starting. Domini is mining their huge database and inviting guests to the party. Justin is taking charge of the rooms. And Jane is doing what she does best. No, 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 no. Being Jane. You're doing a grand job. The day of the big party is here and the hotel inspector is back in Margate for the last time. First on Alex's agenda is to see Jane's new look living museum. Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, Alex. Thank so you. nice to see you. So nice to be back here. <laughs> but no hats. Ta da But it looks lovely. No, it, it looks... doesn't. It looks boring. Bare. It looks very too bare. Very bare, bare. yes. A good start, but how cluttered are the upstairs corridors? We start here. But, da da! That looks wonderful. Right, and this is the costume room. Well, I much prefer it all again being grouped together. Even the hats that once swamped reception have found a new home. Impressive, darling, and uh, I see a glove collection. Oh, yes. To me, it's now um, something beautiful to look at. Thank you. So I'm really pleased that you've done this. Still well got done. samples out to show people. I'm d I have no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> now it's time for Alex to reveal to Justin and Jane the two rooms she has redesigned. Jane and Justin clashed over a traditional versus modern look for the rooms. Alex has come up with a design embracing them both. It's out with the old, tired-looking wallpaper, mismatching furniture and carpeted bathrooms. And it's in with the new, a modern 21st century feel that retains period features, the essence of the Walpole's past. But the proof is in the viewing. I, I like it. I like the layout. The chairs look absolutely wonderful. With the curtains, they go really well with the Battleship Grey, something that a long time... For years <laughs> we've been getting rid of Battleship Grey in this hotel, but Alex. I just think it's quite useful for you to see that you don't have to have wallpaper in a room for mm. it all still to be period. Yeah. I love the fact that it looks clean, but it's still got character. character. And the bathroom's fantastic. I, I love the bathroom. Mm. I love the mosaic tiles. Next, the other newly designed room. I think really what I was just trying to show you is that you can keep all this period furniture and Justin can still get his nice, clean, modern look that today's traveller really does expect. I think we've then accomplished what we set out to do. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. With the seal of approval from Justin, the new bedroom manager, the Walpole Bay Hotel now has a clear model for the future. But with the party to come, there's havoc at the hotel. If you can get it done straight away, yeah. Christina! Christina! Five months ago, the Walpole Bay Hotel in Margate and the Bishop family were in crisis. After help from the hotel inspector, the hotel and museum are now looking to the future with a considered collection of valued memorabilia and modern bedrooms that reflect its Edwardian past. The family is pulling together and working towards the same goal, success. The hotel inspector is back to see if the family can pull off a 1920s themed party and sell the hotel to the world.
I need the creases on these bits okay. ironed out. It's in the but preparations are proving chaotic. Right, the guest list snap is being revised again. Glasses, I need some glasses. Wine glasses washed up, OK? If you can get it done straight away. Yep. You're right, gang, you're right without me, I'm going. Irene, we need butter curls done. We need two trays, 12 on a tray. You OK with that? OK, where's Christina? She's doing that with. Right. Christina! 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 You look lovely. Hi, thank you. So do you. This way. Hello, 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 hello. That is not 1920s jumper, that jumper. Just in time for the arrival of their 110 guests, the bishops get their act together. Hello? You all right, darling? Transform, darling. Transform. Oh, what do you think? Are you look gorgeous. Okay. Some of the guests are shown Alex's renovated rooms. Do they approve of her compromise between Justin's contemporary look and Jane's traditionalism? We show the beauty of the furniture. Thank you. So it's a room that you'd like to stay in? Oh, yes, definitely. Well, I think you've complemented the, um, the decor very well, and it's given it uh, an upbeat, bright atmosphere, and I think you've improved them greatly. I think the party is going really well. The room looks wonderful. There's lots of food. Everyone's had a drink or two. And almost everyone who's been up to the rooms think that they're wonderful. There's almost universal approval of what we've done there. If I could have your attention, everybody! Thank you. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to Walpole. And the whole purpose of tonight is our new Walpole relaunch for the makeover of the two new rooms. I hope all of you have had the opportunity of going up, and I'm so sorry that you haven't been able to compare the new with the old, but all the old ones are full up. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much, and I'm sure that this hotel is going to go from strength to strength, because with such a wonderful united family, how could it do otherwise? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. The 20s party is a roaring success. It's time for Alex to bow out for the final time. The greatest thing we've achieved is, is bringing us together a bit more and that we're more focused. Um, we all seem to be working towards a common goal. The Walpole's leaner and meaner, and we do have direction now. We know where we're going. I think my biggest challenge now is, is to carry on in the manner, to keep it up and not digress back into the way that we were. As a family, we're stronger, and as a business team, we're stronger too. Farewell. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donnie. Lovely mm -hmm. to meet you. Thank and you, you, Alex. For having me you. to your place. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed every minute. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Lovely to meet you all, and I hope everything goes really well. Yes, without you looking over our shoulder. <laughs> you never know when I might return, so keep the hats away from the reception, OK? We'll try. I'll we'll see you try. soon, I promise. And we'll try. Thank we'll you. Try. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> All right, darling, thank you, and I'll thank see you, you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Safe journey. Thank you. Bye. Aww. Right, come and help me get the hats. <laughs> Next time, the hotel inspector battles bad taste in Blackpool. Need I say more? Design-wise, this really needs thinking through. That hasn't really impressed me. I was just expecting more of a, a, a wow factor, I suppose. But they have heard that phrase, wow factor, on some house decorating show.
Next week looks like a cracker, but the shades are on and it's a race against time tomorrow night for Horatio Kane and the team as the brand new season of CSI Miami continues tomorrow at nine. Next, Demi Moore and Alec Baldwin star in the psychological thriller The Jura.